Welcome to part 11 of the live steam Charles Loco build. Welcome to Dave's workshop and garden railway. Clocking up the base to make sure it's in the right position before I drill through into the cylinder block. Starting on the rear cylinder covers. That's one and a half inch 385 grade brass bar in the four jaw chuck. I made one cover first to make sure I was on the right track. First operations. Face off. Turn the 1.2 inch rear cover outside diameter for a length of approx 0.6 of an inch. The piece is 0.550 inch finished. Very carefully turned bore register. The closer this fits to the cylinder the better. I'm going to use 4mm diameter stainless for piston rods. The hole has been centre drilled, then drilled with a 3.7mm drill, then with a 3.9mm drill. I don't go straight to a 3.9 in case the drill cuts a little oversize. The job has been hacksawed off. To save material, I am thrifty. Then faced off in a three jaw chuck to length. In this shot, the hole has been reamed straight through with my new four mil hand reamer. These reamers have a long tapered section, so I require a straight through hole. I use a slow speed, 200 RPM. I added a pin to the soldering mandrel to make the job run true when using the three jaw. I thought about holding the mandrel in the chuck for the milling operations, but this didn't work out in the end. There's just solder on the end face. This time I took care not to get solder too close to the register. Turned the 0.9 inch diameter for the boss, leaving the flange 0.1 inch thick. Counterbore for the o-ring was a whoopsie. I made it a quarter inch diameter when it should have been 9.30 seconds. Bored with a tiny boring bar. After removing from the mandrel, the excess solder was wiped off with a Kleenex. I milled the boss in the vertical slide vise after all, using the fly cutter. Milling the second long side. Using a piece of 3 8 tool steel as a parallel against the back face of the vise, so that the milled faces are parallel. Setting up the flange bolt hole drilling jig on the job using V-blocks. The long milled face is resting on the farther V-block. The holes have to be in the correct position to the boss. All ten holes drilled for 8BA tapping. Drilling through the cover and into the cylinder block for the four retaining studs. 1.8mm diameter. Here's the drillings, swarf and all. The holes aren't full depth yet, they'll be finished next. This is the finished drilling setup, on a piece of paper to protect the end face. I drilled them a quarter inch deep, and then tapped them, starting in the bench drill for squareness and finishing by hand. Trial fitting with four screws. The piston rod gland cover set up for drilling the three holes by coordinates, using a piece of Mac Models packing timber to support the job and drill into. The central hole has been drilled through 4mm, and the outer holes 1.8mm were drilling through into the end cover. The job has been superglued to a piston rod for correcting the o-ring counterbore. It needed an extra 32 thou removing from the diameter. You can see the slide bar retaining bolt hole and one of the two screws for the gland cover. It wasn't advisable to drill these from the front cover after all, so I drilled them straight through from the inner face, making them straight through holes, which isn't something I wanted to do, but will be fine with the studs when the studs are sealed. The slide bar will be a quarter inch strip, so I turn the boss to blend in the gap a little. The boss is 3 8 inch wide. Here's the cylinder ends front and rear. The fastener cost for the cylinders is really mounting up. I've just placed a second order. The total for the cylinders is £110. Here's the start of the second cover, incorporating some improvements to the process. It's a pleasure hacksawing this brass. The turning helped reduce the hacksawing. I skimmed off the solder from the mandrel. 
I wanted to use super glue this time. It worked out well and only applied to the end face. The finish turned cover. The boss diameter is 0.9 inch, leaving just enough on for milling. Drilling for the gland fixing holes before the boss is milled, using a piece of brass tube to align both parts. The holes are deep but blind, which is best. I tap them 8BA after the milling. But with the holes in place, the milling has to be in the correct relation to them. So I'm using my 1.8mm drills to locate the job against the vice jaw. Milling the top boss face. I very nearly made a fatal mistake. I was blindly taking cuts thinking how pleasant this all was when I came to my senses. My mental arithmetic said 0.1 inch needed removing, but actually only 50 thou needed removing. That little cut mark you can see is the 60 thou cut that I aborted. Close call. Clocking up the base to make sure it's in the right position before I drill through into the cylinder block. I decided to plug the original slide bar bolt hole and redo it closer to the front, as it would be difficult to access. So I plugged it with a brass screw and loctited it in place before trimming it off. Here's the second rear cover with a hole in a better position. It's super glued onto a piece of piston rod material for skimming those sharp corners down to one quarter inch. Starting on the second gland cover, the first is soldered to a piece of scrap 1.2mm brass sheet. I have just drilled through the holes using the first as a guide. The job is supported with a piece of timber for drilling through. Just starting to profile the second piece by filing to the contours of the first. You can't beat using wet or dry wet. It doesn't clog. I'm using 320 grit under the running kitchen tap using a marble board. The two gland covers are still joined. I separated them soon after. Cutting a 332nd inch brass gland cover hole down stud to length. It will be threaded 8BA on the end. Progress so far. The rear covers are finished. I'm just waiting on more fasteners. Thanks for watching.